The second to last book I want to talk to you about is actually a graphic novel. We haven't talked about a graphic novel for a while, so I'm excited about this. And it's called Illegal by Ewan Colfer and Andrew Duncan. I really need to work harder on memorizing my author names. If you recognize the name Ewan Colfer, it's because he is responsible for the Artemis Fowl series. And this is his most recent work. And it is a graphic novel that grapples with the subject of the refugee crisis. Now, I am super interested in that for a number of reasons. Number one, I'm interested in reading everything that I can about the refugee crisis because it is such a complex, multi-layered issue that is so pertinent to the times that we find ourselves in that I don't feel that I can ever know too much about it or understand it from too many perspectives. So anything about it, I'm happy to get my hands on and educate myself more. One of the things that excites me the most about this particular thing is that it is a graphic novel. Now, there's a wealth of non-fiction books about the crisis and there is some fiction too. I need to speak to you guys about a book called Welcome to Nowhere, which is a YA book which talks about it, but I haven't seen many graphic novels that deal with the subject. Now, anything that can add to the conversation surrounding it and crucially, in my opinion, anything that can make the conversation about the refugee crisis more accessible is important to me and let's face it graphic novels are accessible sometimes in a way that fiction and non-fiction aren't especially non-fiction which can be dense and gatekeepery in its academic nature so really excited about a graphic novel about it we follow Ebo who's 12 he's lost his mother he's a very energetic young boy full of spirit and he lives in Niger in a small village and he follows his brother to a nearby town called Agadez where some people have promised to take them across the Sahara Desert to Tripoli. Now we all know if we've read about the refugee crisis what happens then. They basically get taken across to Europe by some pretty evil men in pretty awful terrifying conditions and have to make their lives there at one point Ibo becomes separated from his brother so it's about what he can do to survive what that means for a 12 year old how you kind of assimilate that in your head what you understand of the fact that you've been essentially taken away from your home country in search of better life and is that really a better life if you end up in the hands of egregious people who are going to take advantage of you and this was absolutely beautiful not only because of the illustrations but also in the small details of the story and I think that's what's really important in conversation about the refugee crisis it's easy to have those massive swathing political conversations where we try and find solutions and where we try and be proactive but I think in those conversations very soon we start forgetting that the people at the center of this crisis are actual human beings with lives before and after and their children who have favorite stuffed animals, favorite foods, favorite drinks, who love their siblings, who joke, who fight, who sing, all of those things. And I remember when I reviewed New Jean, which is about a disabled girl who made her way across to Europe in the refugee crisis, I said the same thing, that it's really important to have a conversation about the smaller details and the people involved and kind of humanize that in our heads. And this is what this does really well. Not only do you have, like I said, those beautiful illustrations to support a story, but there's a, there's a part, for example, in the graphic novel where Ibo gets a hold of some wipes and he is trading those wipes one by one for food and drink. And I think that image will stay in my head for a really long time because you know that that image is not fictional and that children of Ibo's age 
are going through things like that and that there are things that the political powers in the world can do to prevent that from happening that is super complicated and internationally messy but that we can do something about it if we remember that there are humans at the center of this crisis and so seeing these images and the story of this boy and how the authors of the graphic novel interweave his story with research that they did through interviews with actual refugees and children who've been through this crisis you kind of end up with this multi-dimensional real honest respectful look at this thing and that's why i recommend that everyone should read it yeah it's it's just really beautiful and it's not necessarily something I would have expected from the author of Artemis Fowl, but if you can get your hands on it, I definitely, definitely would. The last book I want to talk to you about is Seeing Red by Lena Meroan, translated by Megan McDowell. This is a really interesting little book and something I read a while ago and realised that I had not talked about. And this is a good video to talk about it in because it also deals with some form of disability. It's about a character who is also called Lena, interestingly. And so this, I think we're building a theme in this video of like, is it a novel? Is it nonfiction? How do you tread that line? Does it actually really matter? Or is the distinction between genres really a way to make publishing easier? And do we have any preconceptions when we're going into a novel versus a memoir? But anyway, I, th I thought a lot about this when I was reading Seeing Red by Lena Meran because the main character, as I say, is called Lena and it is about a woman who is diabetic and she is slowly losing her sight as a result of the diabetes. So the book begins with her literally seeing red because her eyes are suddenly filled with blood and her vision is slowly going to deteriorate throughout the book until she can't see at all and if you're thinking about all the allegorical things that can mean then you're probably on the money with much of this book it's a very stream of consciousness some would say overwritten i think it's quite poetic and beautiful style of writing and it's kind of about how you battle with that again how you come to understand this huge change in your life and the true change in perception that can come with losing a sense that has been so important to you what does it mean to not see the man that you love ever again he's there and he's supporting you but what does it mean to not see him and not in an over romanticized way in fact the story between lena the character of lena and her boyfriend was one of the most interesting in this book for me because it turns into a kind of manipulative unhealthy relationship as a result of this huge change that lena is experiencing how does that affect her relationships with people and how does that affect the way that she thinks? In a lot of senses, she starts seeing and perceiving the world in a completely different way because she doesn't have those visual cues anymore. And so her entire perception shifts. And that conversation is really interesting to me. And it is not had, in my opinion, in this novel in a way where it's basically, oh, here's what I learned from going blind and how it made me a better person and how it made me understand so much more about the world. I'm not really interested in that type of conversation. It is not a nuanced way of looking at disability. I often have people say to me, well, if you weren't disabled, um, you wouldn't be so empathetic or you wouldn't have read so much because you'd have been able to do more physical things and I don't subscribe to that I think I would have been a different person for sure but I don't necessarily think I would have been a worse one 
And so I feel like this book is nuanced in its conversation surrounding that. The overall message is definitely not that blindness has made her into a more perceptive person, but it kind of toes that line. And to me, that's interesting. It loses me a little bit throughout the middle of the novel. There are bits that kind of trail off, but I do think there are moments of real greatness in it. We get a mixture of backdrops. She lives in America, but she is from Chile, and so she goes back to Chile at some point in the novel to see her family and get medical care. And the kind of red blood, quite literally, that forms part of Chile's political landscape and also America's political political landscape because it takes place around September 11th, 2001, is really interesting and the kind of role of the colour red and the metaphorical resonance of the colour red throughout the book was really significant to me. So yeah, definitely something to explore if, again, if you like that less linear look into something and the more, I don't know, yeah, self-conscious, I guess, way of expressing oneself. It kind of made me think of Men the Living by Maëlys de Carangel, which I loved, and I would not say that I loved this as much, but the writing style had echoes of that for me. So if you liked Men the Living, you maybe would like this. In any case, I would recommend it. If you're looking to read more about people with different disabilities or bodily differences. So yeah, I think without really trying to, I've recommended books that kind of fit into each other neatly. Either they toe the line between different genres or they're about disability. Anyway, hopefully something has piqued your interest and hopefully it's not too obvious that I am quite tired and quite stressed. It's been so nice to be back in front of the camera again and I'm sure that you'll be seeing much more of me while I stick around in Arizona, trying not to get too hot. And in the meantime, please let me know how you've been, what you've been up to. I turned 26 recently at the beginning of this month, so I will be doing a book haul soon. I always do a birthday book haul and I didn't do a Christmas book haul this year, so I have lots of exciting things to show you when I get back to LA and have my books. Also, for those of you who've made it this far, I really want to ask you, there are a bunch of books that for some reason I haven't got into reviewing in videos, not because I didn't want to, but just because they haven't fit into anything I filmed and God knows I go on for ages, so I haven't wanted to fit them into various recent reads or whatever, but some of them, I don't know, it feels outdated to talk about them now, but do you want me to talk about them? And if so, would you have any preferred way of me doing so? So let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. I think I'm going to get Philip back in front of the camera to do the partner's reading tag, which is so exciting. He is like shaking his head, but he said yes earlier, so I don't know what his problem is. But yeah, let me know anything you want to in the comments. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. Hopefully it's not been too horrifically long and I hope you have a wonderful rest of week and I will speak to you soon. Bye. It's never going to be not awkward to end these videos. That was a bit of a gulp.